All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another MTG Bulk Mythic YouTube video. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I've been doing recently with the product openings, and instead, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite commander decks. This is the deck that I've had for the longest amount of time. It's one of my most favorite to play, and uh, it's it's just a lot of fun. I've been working on it over time. I I will admit it's not you know 100%, which no commander deck should ever be 100%, right? You should always be willing to make some changes. But in this instance, the deck that we're talking about today is my Sliver Overlord commander deck. And while it may look like it is a creature beatdown deck, in reality, I see it more as a toolbox deck because the Sliver Overlord itself is a tutor. And then most of the utility comes from the creature. So being able to go find the sliver that has the ability that I need at the right point in the game is really where I think this deck shines. And, of course, because it has just a ton of creatures in it, it can get pretty overwhelming pretty quickly. So um, we'll start out with some of the, some of the non-utility or I'm sorry, non-creature utility cards that are in it. Uh, obviously, every deck needs some card draw. And uh, things like Ristic Study is in here, because if you're playing blue, why not, right? Uh, have the Ristic Study in there. You could also utilize in this deck because the creatures are my spells and their abilities are the utility. Uh, you know, if a creature gets destroyed, then being able to bring them back from the graveyard is kind of a big thing. So on the top of the curve of my recursion is Eerie Ultimatum. It's 7 mana. It is the most expensive spell in the deck. But I also have you know, Return from Extinction and uh, cards like that to go ahead and pull some of those other creatures from the graveyard, return to my hand, or the battlefield, depending on, on what I need them to do, so I can continue to utilize their utility um, in addition to that for removal i've got your path to exile i've got your uh, share uh, plows um source of plowshares that's the one sorry about that and of course cyclonic rift uh, cyclonic rift is essentially the only board wipe that i have in this deck just because i don't want to also target my own creatures if i can avoid it uh, one of the things to kind of help me in that matter is Sliver Hive Lord, which is one of each color of mana for a 5-5, five five, and Slivers I control have indestructible. So even in the face of my opponent's board wipes, I can kind of keep them from taking taking my creatures as well and turn them into kind of a, a, a one-sided ordeal with that. Uh, in addition to that, you know, when getting into the slivers, I have all of the rest of the five color slivers. I have the Sliver Queen. Now, this one is in here mostly just an homage to all of the legendary slivers. It's uh, five mana, although it is a 7-7, seven, seven, it's a very big creature. Uh, it also has the ability to pay two mana and put a sliver token into play that is a 1-1 one, one colorless uh, creature token. So, I can broaden my uh, my offense you know put some more creatures on the board and even trigger some enter the battlefield abilities from slivers that are already in play which is a good deal there um but uh other than that it's just that's that's basically you know all she does you know it's another um it's another one of the uh the slivers just to have the five color slivers in there Right now, the other five color slivers that have a little bit more utility are my Sliver Legion. Right, it has the uh, the ability of all sliver creatures get plus one plus one for each other sliver in play. So as long as I'm the only sliver player, all of my slivers get you know plus one plus one for each other sliver. So it's uh, you know plus x plus x where x is one minus the number of slivers I have in play, which is also Essentially the same thing that Coat of Arms says. Each creature gets plus one plus one for each creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. So now this is a symmetrical effect. So if I'm playing another tribal deck, they can also take this ability to pump their creatures. 
but I'm just counting on the fact that I'm going to have a lot more slivers than they have goblins or they have elves or whatever other tribal strategy comes to the table. Um, in addition to that, I have the first sliver, which is a 7-7 seven, seven for 5 with Cascade, and sliver spells that I have also have Cascade. So when you cast this one, it will Cascade for a uh, converted mana cost 4 or less sliver. When that one is cast off the Cascade, it doesn't because the first sliver hasn't interplayed yet. But once the sliver first sliver is in play, every single sliver I have will Cascade, including the ones they Cascade into. So when you look at the meta curve of the deck, there is a little bit of that thought in mind to try to get you know two to three slivers off of a single cast of a four, five, or six mana cost sliver if I possibly can. All right, now, in addition to that, because the creatures are my spells, I do need to be able to attack. Some of the issues that this deck may have is things like uh, lockdown enchantments, lockdown artifacts, things of that nature. So for that, we'll have a suite of artifact and enchantment removal in Sundering Vite, Destructive Revelry, Crossing Grip, and even Harmonic Sliver. So Harmonic Sliver is a pretty powerful one. It is a uh, even played outside of uh, sliver decks in commander because it is one a green and a white for a 1-1 one, one that says slivers have when this creature enters play destroy target artifact or enchantment so it can really you know break up mana ramp by destroying rocks it can free up plays by taking o-ring effects off of your creatures or pacifism effects off of your creatures other taxation effects from enchantments and things like that and every time you cast another sliver while this is in play it will go ahead and destroy that many more enchantments every single time. Right. <clears throat> Moving on also have uh, the ability to put keywords on all of my slivers you know one of the good ones is vigilance so I can go ahead and attack and still have everything up to block so sentinel sliver is one of the many vigilant ones uh, there's also the full suite of flying slivers like Gale Rider, Winged, uh, Cloud Sliver gives flying and, or Cloud Sh Shredder gives flying and haste, and Pulmonic to provide that evasion. Uh, we have the Bone Scythe Sliver for Double Strike even, and Striking Sliver for First Strike, and then everybody knows you could always pair up first strike and death touch for some pretty phenomenal uh, combat right there uh, basically all the abilities you know there's actually a small alternate win condition in virulent sliver uh, all slivers have poisonous one which is a little bit different than infect uh, if you if you deal damage to an opponent with a creature with poisonous that opponent gets one poison counter. It does not get a poison counter equal to the power of that creature, the amount of damage that would have been dealt. Uh, but you know it will, it can stack up over time when you're attacking with several different slivers. Uh, in addition to that, there's also the spiteful sliver. That states uh, slivers you control have whenever this creature is dealt damage deals that much damage to target player or planeswalker. So I can reflect damage back to my opponents you know a lot of real interesting things to add to the toolboxy effect is homing sliver go ahead and give all my slivers sliver cycling for three if I don't have the right one in my hand I can discard it for three mana and search up another one of my choice and then near the top end of course is breaking through with battering sliver uh, once you get a bunch of them in play if they're, not, if they're not flying or whatever, but you're able to pump them up with Legion or Coat of Arms or other slivers like Predatory Sliver that pumps up all your creatures, you're able to go ahead and push that damage through to end the game. Now, in addition to that, you know, for uh, the sake of removal is Constricting Sliver, another uh, six mana, so kind of top of the curve as far as the creatures are concerned, but slivers I control have when this creature enters the battlefield exile 
target creature and opponent controls until it leaves though that creature leaves the battlefield so it's um banisher priest on a sliver it's also a 3-3 body it isn't terrible so as you see here you know there's a lot of different things going on i need to protect what i have going so we also have this uh crystalline sliver which gives all of my slivers shroud not just hex proof but shroud cannot be the target of spells or abilities whether they're mine or somebody else's this does not remove the static abilities that are shared across all the slivers but it definitely keeps them from uh, being targeted by my opponents and keeps what i have in play in play so a lot of key pieces here a lot of different things that are that that can stack up very very quickly and tend to get out of hand but as you can see i'm using all of the colors of the pie so how do i how do i go about doing that what does the mana base look like because i can already hear it's like oh well geez a five color mana base where you literally need all of your colors all of the time how are you going to do that um it's actually not as hard as it seems and it's not nearly as bad as you would want to believe all right so in this deck first of all i run chromatic lantern makes all my lands five color lands i also have the two mana slivers so mana weft and gem hide that turn all my slivers into five color mana dorks i know that along with a uh, vigilant sliver ability allows me to attack keep everything untapped and then go ahead and tap my slivers to cast spells later on all right i also you know do have to put some time into the mana base so with chromatic lantern if i can't find that one piece to make all my lands five colors you still have to get a little creative i do not have original dual lands in here i don't have any, i do not have all the fetch lands i do have fetch lands like fable passage prismatic vista um uh terramorphic expanse and evolving wild those are the four fetch lands that i have in here and they are just there to help me with the handful of of basics that are in here actually eight basics that are in this deck to go get the exact color i need at the right time but i usually don't have that problem um because i am running all 10 of the shock lands i was fortunate enough to be playing actively in draft and standard when the sets the fetch lands were most recently printed in um i'm sorry the the shock lands were most recently printed in came out so i was able to acquire them uh through just pack opening and playing and things like that but uh still not too expensive um some of the other op things that you can have out there are the battle the battle bond lands are a good substitute for the shock lands um but having something that enters the battlefield untapped in those 10 dual land slots is really key because a lot of your other lands are things like all five of the triumphs and then all five of the shard lands. Before the triumphs were printed, I was using the Khans of Tarkir wedge lands, but all 10 of those lands are in the battlefield tapped. The reason why the triumphs have replaced the Khans of Tarkir wedge lands is because they have cycling three. If it's already late game, and I have all the all the mana that I need. I can pitch this for three mana and draw a real spell, right? And then of course I have a full suite of actual five color lands. The headliner here, of course, is Sliver Hive, because I can make one mana of any color to cast a Sliver spell, and it also generates one one Sliver tokens, uh, similar to the Sliver Queen. Only it, this one it costs five, and you have to tap it, so you can only do it once per turn with that card. Whereas a Sliver King, Queen, as long as you can continue to pant, pump mana into it. But there's also Cavern of Souls, uh, Mana Confluence, Ancient Ziggurat, a number of other uh, five color lands and five, and five color mana rocks like Commander Sphere, Sphere Dark Steel Ingot, and uh, the Arcane Signet to really make sure that I have all the colors that I need when I need them. Like I said, there are eight basic lands in this deck for the sake of uh, of uh, making sure that I'm protected against things like Blood Moon, or I have something to go get if I, one of my creatures gets path uh, gets pathed. So it's based on the actual color mana symbol in the creatures in the deck. So I have two forests, one mountain, two swamps, one island, and two plains. 
so that if I need an, a non-basic land, uh, I can go out and get the one that I need. So it's actually a total of 40 lands in this deck. Um, it is kind of a mana hungry deck. There are slivers in the six mana slot. There is uh, Eerie Ultimatum in the seven mana slot. Getting all your colors is hugely important. So I went on the high end of of the the mana. Uh, I mean, I would be adverse to finding ways to get it down to 36 lands to get more utility, either spells or more utility creatures in there, uh, in the slivers. But other than that, it's a lot of fun to play. It can be super aggressive, but you need to pay attention to the fact that you're going to paint a target on your back because everybody else at the table is not going to let you try to stack a lot of effects. If you cast a sliver and you get two or three triggers off of it and it's got two or three key relative keywords on it, you're going to have a lot of people trying to kind of trim that value down for lack of a better term. So you need to be careful with that. Uh, I think the most fun I had playing this deck was at a two-headed giant commander night a while back. I got randomly paired because I came without a partner with a player that had to send triplets. So they were the controller and I was the, the aggressive player. And uh, we didn't lose a single game that entire evening. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, we, we saw a lot of very interesting decks. But when you're destroying a course or a crew fix with a harmonic sliver trigger um, or removing soul rings, and then throwing out creatures that are four fours, five fives, and then all of a sudden they're they're twelve twelves. It's it can get pretty bad when send triplets is also you know taking the best spells out of your opponent's hand and using them against them. So um, that's actually encouraged me to start building a send triplets deck as well. Hopefully I can get a baseline of that put together, and you can see it again later. But you know, if you have any questions, comments about the Sliver Overlord, or if you have some other awesome commander ideas, I should have some more coming your way. Go ahead and throw them in the comments. Make sure to subscribe. Follow us on, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links are going to be down in the description. Uh, share with your friends. Let them know what's going on. If you're really liking it, give the video a thumbs up. All those things. I'm just trying to grow the channel right now and, and see what people are enjoying so I can continue to make more of that. And, you know, let everybody know that we're enjoying our hobby together. Thank you.